Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here, Wednesday, the 19th of October, 2022, with your midweek stock market snapshot. Going to look at the weekly, the daily, and the 60-minute charts this morning. Before we get going, just some narrative on kind of what's going on in the world. So we are entering the earnings season and the fourth quarter of the calendar year. More importantly, the last two and a half months of the fourth quarter of the calendar year seasonally, that is about the best stretch that you'll find historically for stocks. Coming into this particular one, we had very low sentiment readings or call it very high fear readings. And over the last several weeks, revisions, negative revisions, pretty much across the board, across all sectors for the earnings season, meaning analysts keep revising lower their earnings expectations. So that counterintuitively or contrarianly, the latter part of that, the sentiment sets the stage for the potential for a rally, right? Everybody's loaded on the bare side of the boat. You get a little good news or a little upward momentum. People begin to fear missing out, rush in, pushes the market up and so forth. The technicals also look pretty constructive, which we're going to go over here in a minute. So you've noticed, uh, those of you who just watched the videos, you've noticed kind of a change in terms of our short-term view of the market, more constructive. Those who read the written blog and watch the videos, we continue to point out that our overall view is that the bear market likely or odds favor still lower lows before we're done. However, in the very near term, can't help but be, you know, short term bullish for the factors that I just mentioned. Now, in a, in a bigger sense, in a broader sense, what's going on? Well, we still have the Federal Reserve who is not going to back away from their tightening stance and their tightening rhetoric at this point. One governor even suggested that a 75 basis point hike in December, as well as in November, which hasn't really been discounted in the markets, uh, a 50 basis point for December after 75 basis points in November is what Fed Funds Futures would guide to or have been guiding to. Others though are beginning to recognize some potential systemic risk out there. The United Kingdom really brought that home the last two or three weeks. Even Janet Yellen, as I featured on the written blog, on October 10th suggested no worries in terms of tre treasury liquidity. On October 11th suggested, yeah, we have some serious worries about treasury liquidity. And then there's some interesting dynamics in the currency markets that are suggesting the cracks are forming internationally and make no mistake, like the UK situation, uh, cracks forming internationally do come to rest in the US financial markets as well, particularly when we're talking about the Fed and a rising dollar and so on. And then with regard to economic data, we got home builder sentiment yesterday with just, just in the proverbial gutter, very, very pessimistic. Interestingly, while housing starts reported this morning, came in below expectations, housing permits, really, which are you know a harbinger of the short-term future for housing, actually came in above expectations. So some mixed signals there from housing. Mortgage applications continue to plunge, as you might imagine, with 30-year rates, you know, 7% or above. And then we have the manufacturing space, very much declining sentiment, the purchasing managers indexes, not the case, certainly not in the U.S. and services. People are still getting out there and doing stuff. United Airlines just this week posted good earnings. Um, and industrial production actually exceeded expectations. So there's back to the manufacturing. Um, you have sentiment that's really waning, although data as it's coming in says everything is not so bad. And capacity utilization is at 80 percent, which is high for recent history in terms of factories to the degree that they're running at capacity. So um, weak sentiment, but decent data, right? So we'll see how that's going to play out. And for us and our overall mild recession thesis, it's really things like I shared with you 
this week about Bank of America's depositors having two to five times more in their accounts than they did even pre-COVID. We had similar report here recently from JP Morgan as well. So the health of the consumer seems to be pretty okay. It's still right here. We're not seeing dangerous levels of debt. We're seeing a pretty good balance sheet. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of activity out there in the services sector. On corporate earnings and the earnings outlook, I mentioned they've been revised down. But the point I've been making lately is we do have a inflationary setup, no doubt about it. We have inflation running at about 8.2%, which is ironically what retail sales were at the headline that I reported last week. And of course, so that means they were flat on a real basis. But you have um, wages growing at about a 5% clip. And of course, wages being the biggest input for most companies, certainly the services sector. So if you have inflation running you know, at 8% at the moment, on a year-over-year -year basis, and you have wages running at 5%, right? And wages are the biggest part of your costs. Well, then you have actually a net increase in margins, right? So what that says is companies are able to pass on those prices for the moment. And perhaps their input costs aren't as high as the price increases. You wake up and you realize, oh, wait a second, earnings actually aren't that bad and they're not coming in that bad, or maybe they're not gonna be as bad or as dire as everybody is anticipating. So something to keep in mind as we get into this earnings season. So when we come in with such high pessimism and suddenly companies start beating those estimates, well, then you know that can equate to something special in the stock market. As I'm talking at you right now, stocks are pretty flat. They were down, or they're actually up strongly overnight. Netflix really gave a boost in the after hours and earnings and some other other developments as well in the earnings space and then um and then it looked like it probably rolled over when we got the uk's 10 percent headline inflation print uh, eurozone very high inflation revisions as well so that takes us back to concerns over the state of the united kingdom and all the things that have kind of disrupted markets over the last couple of weeks so futures rolled over pretty hard at one point, I think today we're down two thirds of a percent. S and P right now is flat. So, are we going to have a, a a pretty good fourth quarter? You know, I think odds are leaning that way. You know, maybe better than fifty fifty. Is it going to be an everyday rise between here and there? No, it's not. Of course, there's going to be good days like we had the last couple of days. Bad days like today may very well turn out to be. The fact that that dip earlier looks like it's being supported with some buying is interesting. And then there's that whole options conversation expiration on Friday. The folks who we pay to, to give us insight into that. I think a lot of the action here, a lot of the volatility has been inspired by some not small day trading and options that people are speculating with. Um, it does look like here this week we've had more positive call action as opposed to negative put action. And that's bullish and that kind of comports with our short-term thesis. So folks, we'll see how all this plays out. At the margin, clients, as I discussed on the written blog, we're gonna start making those early bull market shifts in the weeks and months to come. Folks who have brought in new money, we've allocated a couple of small, very small amounts over the last couple of weeks. We'll continue to do that. So obviously we see opportunity here and then I'll close this monologue with what I mentioned this morning. We are frankly pretty bullish on certain emerging markets over the next several years. And so those are areas that we're gonna wanna you know, emphasize to a healthy, you know, safe degree in terms of portfolio structure and diversification going forward. Okay, so as for the technicals, you have the weekly chart there in front of you. I said last time I'm beginning to sound like a bull on the weekly chart. And you know, this is why we have a, we have a falling wedge pattern, right? As you can see here. And we have positive divergences in the slope of the MACD. It'll become very positive if we get a buy signal. And in the slope of the RSI, or the Relative Strength Index. Um, you break out above this downtrend line, looks like it's trying to this week. And that's the buy signal when you, if you use this setup right here. The one year daily chart does look constructive, frankly. Uh, this I, I shaded green, this rectangle here, which captures that engulfing candle, which captured the three prior days. That was last Thursday, Friday. You know, we came back off of that, but did not come back down to this level. That was bullish. 
Remember I pointed to this gap right here in the video, the last update, and I pointed, we had a gap here. This is the bottom of the gap, resisted it, right? Uh, right on the nose. And then yesterday actually closed on top of that. And today trying to, you know, keep its head above water, above that gap right there. You get through there, you know, you have resistance at the top of the gap. Yesterday, the market just played within that gap, so to speak. And then today, um, here we are, you know, pushing or trying to push our way into that gap as well. So we'll see a break above that, you know, uh, all things equal would be would be a bullish sign as well. And then you have resistance right here at about 3,800, 3,809, call it. Um, you have a buy signal on the MACD and you have very definite bullish divergences there. So again, constructive on a short-term basis. Um, we'll continue to report to you here and we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, there's still a lot of downside risk in this market, particularly with all this daily speculation that's going on in options. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a bit, bit of bad news could have everybody freaking out and seeing something, you know, not small to the downside. That risk is absolutely there right now. Um, factors, again, seasonality, technicals, and so forth, would definitely allow somebody to be feeling optimistic in the short run right here. Doesn't mean that's how it's going to play out. Just means that that's how the technicals look and that's how sentiment looks to us right now. And then on the 60 minute, and I'll let you go. Keep in mind, every, uh, every candle is an hour. So we have this, you know, down trend line, you know, almost a wedge look right there, really broke out aggressively below it, then bounced hard. And, um, you know, so this, this pattern right here played out, this would be your buy signal coming off of this trend right here. Uh, that rally looked like it had some steam, but then quickly failed, came right back down for a retest of this level right here. And it's gapped up and bounced off of that. And we're just kind of, you know, playing with some levels right in here on the hourly chart. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of ambiguity in this market. Uh, to be honest with you, today wouldn't surprise me either way. If we close up, small or big, down, small or big. Not much right here on the hourly chart. You know, it's not like we're up and we have bearish divergences. Uh, you know, that's moving with the price, finding some, uh, some support right in here. So, you know, short-term stuff. Like I said a minute ago, Big risk to the downside right here. Also, could see could see something special to the upside next week. We have you know most of the Fang stocks reporting. If Netflix is any harbinger, well, then next week could be special to the upside, barring anything you know international, anything that spikes the dollar through the roof or yields and that sort of thing. Uh, but from a pure earnings standpoint, uh, I don't think you need to be real pessimistic right here. Could be wrong. Time will tell. We'll know soon enough. Thank you, folks, as always, for watching and listening, and I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye-bye.